Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll be writing a code for optimizing the path that has been already recorded. And then finally, uh, we'll be proceeding towards our last video where uh, we'll be writing a program to understand the recorded path and then optimize and then follow the shortest path possible. So as you were able to see on the screen, uh, this was the slide that we have already discussed earlier. So I'll be taking the same example now and uh, show you how to program this. So for instance, uh, the path that we have discussed has the following path, like we got LBL, then double LB, SB, LLB, SLL. So this is going to be optimized by replacing three characters at a time. So if you observe properly, uh, you'll find that wherever we have that XBX kind of a pattern, where X uh, would be either left or right or straight, we are going to replace that with a specific character. And hence, we'll be proceeding ahead uh, by reducing all the redundant paths. And then finally, we're going to come up with uh, RL, which is going to be our final path. So just to begin with, uh, let me uh, first of all define a small function, uh, so-called uh, short, short path or maybe shortening path. So let me, uh, okay. So this was our code that we have written earlier uh, where I, sh I have shown you how to write the conditions for identifying the junctions. So I have written a couple of more uh, possible junction path codes. So I have also mentioned the conditions. You'll be getting this code along with this post so that you can easily identify and uh, go through it. So 001100 actually is meant for um, the sensor readings whenever a forward condition is attained or encountered, like what we have discussed in our earlier video. Similarly, I have written all the codes for the forward, reverse, end condition. Uh, and uh, wherever you find this single condition, it's a meaning that uh, you don't have any other possibilities. Like uh, whenever a junction is encountered, you just have a single condition to be uh, called upon. So, and reverse, forward, all these are single conditions where you, if you proceed ahead, uh, even left and left T have a single condition, but whereas for right and right T you have a dual condition. I mean, this particular possibility of the conditions that these uh, given uh, pinouts, so-called 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, uh, you will be having a similar condition for a different kind of a junction. So whether it's right or a right T, we are going to have same kind of condition. So that's why we need to check both the things. Like whenever this condition encounters, uh, we need to check whether it is right T or right and then take a proper decision. So if it's just a right turn, uh, then we have to move right. And if it's a right T kind of a condition, then we have to simply move forward. So that's how we have covered all the conditions. And finally, we have written a condition for cross condition where all the sensors are going to be one. Now, uh, let me introduce a new function called short path, which will So I'm defining a function which is going to return a string. So by default, uh, our path is stored in a specific array called uh, store path or any uh, kind of a string, so-called path. And uh, let, let us uh, later on discuss, I mean, uh, whether this short path function is going to accept any argument in this place or not. So for time being, let us only discuss about how to shorten a path. So I'm imagining that, uh, I'm just assuming that we already have some path that is already recorded, like what we have seen in the slide earlier. So let me introduce you with the same example. So I've already copied the example where uh, I'm assuming that I have a string called path, uh, which is recorded whenever the robot traces your path during the first iteration, and it has recorded this under the string called path. And the expected output, which I'm expecting is RL after reduction. This is all uh, 
uh, what we have learned till now. Now that can be achieved by replacing every LBL with S and LB, every LBS with an R and every RBL with a B and so on until you reach this LBR being replaced by B. So for that, we need to um, use a couple of uh, operations like uh, what we have seen earlier by using some of the internal reference libraries of Arduino. Therefore, uh, let me first of all take something like, I'm going to simply write instructions for replacing every LBL with S inside a string called path. So I already have a string instance called path. So I'm using a function called replace, which is an inbuilt function uh, defined uh, in your Arduino IDE. So it's a string related function. So I'm going to replace a character in the instance called path where I need to replace this. Okay. I'm going to replace this with a single character that is S. Okay. So what this does is this is going to simply replace the instance called LBL with S. Similarly, I'm going to write the same instruction for all remaining things. So I think I have already replaced one character, so I need five more. Okay. So next I'll be replacing LBS so copy paste is going to definitely save you a lot of time so that's the reason why I have uh, already drafted this example so that I can easily copy paste the things. Now I need to replace LBL with S. Okay, that's fine. Then we need to replace LBS with an R. Okay, then RBL with B. Then B, R and B. Okay. So just confirm whether the things are okay. Okay, fine. So what this function does whenever I call this or uh, trigger this function from my main loop, uh, it's going to simply consider uh, the string called path where my path is already recorded by my robot. And it will be simply trying to replace all these things. And then we need not to forget that this function is supposed to return a string. So I'll write from this return what it is going to return the same string so we need not to uh, duplicate this path and uh, do the copy paste stuff again uh, most of the tutorials that you usually find online uh, related to string replace characters and all uh, they usually uh, instruct you people to make a copy of the path on which you are going to operate but here we don't uh, need it because we have to optimize the path which is coming inside as long as you're sure that uh, it is replacing only these characters then you're good to go with this one so since this is a small application an embedded based application specifically uh, a robot so we need not to uh, worry about those data loss perspectives and all so that's all about the function called short path uh, i'll just go ahead and compile i assume that there are no errors in the rest of the code It still says compiling sketch. Okay, got an error. It says front, okay. Okay, so let me just comment this out. Ending. 
okay i'm not interested in understanding what's the error now but i just want whether my short path is true or false okay one more fine take it okay so this is giving me some error okay let me check quickly uh, where the error is okay so the bug uh, was actually i didn't define the path to be a global variable uh, you can even define that under the same short path uh, function so what i'll do is for time being i'm going to just comment this out and I'll take care that whatever redundant code I have I have actually deleted that one so that I will get only those warnings which are uh, intended to be uh, shown on the screen only if I have an error under the short path so let me go ahead and compile it and see if I get any error out of this function now so the error which i was getting here is um, these are incompatible types so either we need to typecast or i need to i've gone through the data sheet or uh, uh, sorry uh, the reference document and i found that it needs to be inside uh, double quotes so s then i have r Okay, then I have B, B, R, and B. Fine. Okay, so compile and let me check if I get any error. Hopefully, it should compile without any error. And yes, uh, we have compiled it successfully. So apart from this, we'll be using one more instruction uh, in our final video. That is, uh, I'll just give you an over a short overview now. That is, uh, I'll be using a function called path dot a. My caps is on. So there is a function called path dot index of. Uh, o capital uh, which will identify if I have any specific character available so what this function literally does is uh, it identifies the index uh, of a specific character for instance if I am going for path dot index of B uh, then wherever I have B first coming in the given path I'll be uh, so this function will be returning that so we'll be having something like uh, for instance, if I take an integer variable called x, and if I then write path dot index of b, something like this, then the value which I'll be getting inside x is 1. So I'll be getting 1 because I am searching for the index of b in a string called path. So in a string called path, I have b index as 1 because the indexing starts at 0 for the string. So that's how uh, we'll be using this particular function in our coming video. And only if I have, only if I have, uh, let me first delete this so that we won't get any errors later. Okay, let's compile and check. So the use of index of function uh, is a very important in this uh, final step because we need to first of all call this function called short path once we have recorded it. So the overall flow of our program is going to be something like this. 
initially uh, the setup function is going to take care of setting all the pins as input output as per our desired application and then uh, motors are set with the speed of 200 rpm and then they are released so that they won't uh, start uh, running in a specific direction and then based on the conditions the junction conditions uh, the robot is going to move either forward backward right to left or back and once it ends uh, under the end condition we need to i mean under the halt condition we need to uh, call a function uh, so This is what uh, I meant. So under halt function, uh, halt is going to be executed only once because uh, whenever the robot is going to find the final end junction pattern, only then it will be uh, calling the halt function. And once the halt function is called, it's a meaning that the uh, robot has reached its destination. So we are going to assume that it has traversed the complete path and then it has recorded the path. So here we need to check whether uh, we find any pattern called B and then only we are about to call the short path. So what is going to happen is whenever the robot halts on the destination called end, then it will trigger the function called halt and halt is going to trigger the function called short path, which is going to be called as many times uh, as it finds this B pattern available in that particular uh, stuff, like what we have seen in our, uh, so let me, just check okay so uh, as you have already seen the slide earlier that wherever you have a b only there there is a possibility of reducing the pattern so similarly uh, we need to simply write a function or maybe by using a simple if loop like if path dot index of is not equals to zero then call short path otherwise you can end up and provide some sort of uh, visual or audio based indication like we'll be adding one more uh, motor shield uh, instance and then we'll be connecting a buzzer in place of a motor there so that it can produce some sort of uh, audio beeps whenever it, it is uh, done with the optimization of the path. So that's all for this video and stay tuned for the final video where you'll be finding a robot having its own iterations and then following the optimized path. Thank you.